Within the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which you came to chair, there was this hostility to leadership types. And I remember we used to um, talk about Martin Luther King, sometimes in a disparaging way. Uh, some of us did. Yeah, some of us did. But here comes the leader. Yeah. And some of us were suspicious of the idea of the, the leader, one leader, and thought, of course, that there were many, many leaders. Um, is that a reflection of these earlier thoughts you had? Well, I, I, you know, I admired Martin Luther King, mm. Jr. I loved the man because without Dr. King inspiring me, I don't know where I would be. I, I just don't know. So I have always felt uh, you, you needed somebody, but I was not that person. Mm. Uh, I always felt you needed somebody, but not John Lewis, mm -hmm. not John Robert Lewis. It had to be somebody else. You needed someone else to get out front. And so you needed someone to be the embodiment, to be the personification of the, that idea, of that concept, of that, the essence of that struggle, of that movement. And I felt that Martin Luther King Jr. was, was that person. And there were other people, uh, local and indigenous uh, leaders uh, all across the South during the height of the Civil Rights Movement. So you had national and world-known individuals like Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. in your hand, but you also needed those local indigenous people. But I think there was also the feeling that the, the danger of the single leader is that if he stumbles or falls or dies by natural causes, and you've placed all your hope and faith in, in this person, that when that person is gone, you're left leaderless. I, I think I, I, I shared that. I, I shared it during that period that, um, you know, in SNCC and some of the other groups, we believe in a type of group leadership, uh, a consensus leadership, and, and not just necessarily one person, but a group of individuals, really. And that was one of the beautiful things about uh, the early uh, 60s when uh, we would come together, uh, whether it was Roy Wilkin, Whitney Young, uh, James Farmer, uh, A. Philip Randolph, and, and others, and Dr. King. Uh, but it was, a, it was a sense of solidarity in a, in a sense uh, that somehow, in some way, if something happened to one of us, there would be, and that was in keeping with the philosophy of nonviolence. If something happened to one of us, there would be someone else to step in and take that person. Was there also connected in some way with nonviolence this feeling that you need to seek consensus, that it couldn't be one person saying, let's do this, and, and all of you have to agree with me, that we have to come to some common understanding? I, I think that was very much in keeping with the philosophy and the discipline of nonviolence. You know, some of our old meetings in Nashville, Mm -hmm. there some of those meetings in Nashville, and later as part of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, we would meet. We would meet for a long time. Uh, we would meet until we reach consensus, or either we would wear each other down mm -hmm. until we would have to uh, say, yes, I agree, this is mm -hmm. the way to go, this is what we must do.